Welcome everybody, all the beautiful people out there. We are a little bit hot and late because we mixed so many colors today, yeah. but we are hot. Did I say hot and late? <laughs> it's like your mom. Sorry. Dr. Evil, I'm late. No, actually, Frau, you're right on time. <laughs> no, Dr. Evil, I'm late. Sorry, you guys, nobody out there saw who remembers yeah, watching I'm Austin Powers. Yeah, we randomly picked each other's colors. We don't know. But then I just, I was going to say I pull stuff out of my butt, but I don't do that. I pull stupid ideas out of the last second. And I went to China a long time ago and got to work with these awesome artists. And they did this. I want to be a baller. Yeah, I'm a Mandalorian type of, like that kind of way. Not the Mexican way. This is the way. I way. <laughs> I think my kids, my kids are Mexican. I think they got in trouble for saying way a bunch at school, I think. So yeah, I didn't realize that something They got told that was a bad word. Yeah. I didn't know that either. I never, I was like, man, they used to always say that to me. I knew it was kind of, but I didn't know. Just Apparently, they don't like to hear it there. How is everybody today? What are you guys doing? You're I say, hey, y'all. Jeanette, you're about to watch it go down in here. Jeanette, we have some glitter mixed into some of these, or shimmer, but we don't have like just glitter glitter for you. I think you guys are gonna like this with the big nasty mess I'm about to make up here. Oh, dude, I'm getting you. I'm feeling you. Me and Michael were totally miscommunicating and I did not mean to. I was thinking I was supposed to do a wood grain sample over there, and then, but we have two freaking pieces. I was like, we have way more product than we need, but now I'm excited. Yeah, now I'm mick freaking excited. Hey, a uh, little debate here is I, my, my mom, you know, okay, I'm not gonna tell my age, but 43, 44, 40, 40 something, I don't remember. Um, and my mom used to listen to Sweatin' to the Oldies and some cool stuff like that. And she used to listen to one song called One Night in Bangkok. It makes, I don't know. I thought it said made, whatever. Nobody, everybody here says they've never heard the song. And I swear that was a real song back in the day. So please let me know I'm not losing my mind. And that was the song my mom listened to. Okay, pink. Dude, Michael picked some colors for me here. Michael is trying to sabotage me. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing a group of colors that Michael added into Dirty Pour on my piece, and vice, but I mixed some in for him, so good luck at letting him let, have his piece look any good. I, I even complicated it. I didn't even give him his base color, so. I'm gonna write a letter. I'm gonna write a letter. How is everybody out there? Where are y'all watching from? Do we have any viewers out here today? What's our numbers at? You gotta hit that love button, guys. You gotta hit the follow. I feel like maybe we have zero interaction on there, do we? There's not a lot on here. We've got Pepto Pink and One Night at Bangkok. Let me know, guys, let me know. I wanna make sure our channels watch it work and TikTok's been kinda cutting us off and banning us sometimes, so I wanna know that that I'm not totally freaking crazy here. You so, to Vegas. Vegas. I'll be driving through Vegas to day after tomorrow. What's that? Those are all yours. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I didn't, dude, I, if you want to watch somebody mess something up, watch Levi try to understand the majesty of this artist over here. And I just, he worked all this and mixed all these things, and I just came like a little shit show and messed it all up. So I apologize. But I'm going to try something here. You got something that you UK. UK? Just for one day. Oh. Yeah, what do you guys think, huh? You guys see this? Don't fucking miss it. You blink, you'll miss it, yo. And my rainbows, damn it. Oh, we better get Michael a, another cup out, though. So just dirty poor action. You guys are going to see this. So I, I go in this um, art studio in China, and I was like, 
what are you guys doing with your cups all upside down? And they were like all excited to meet me because they thought I was some fancy artist. And I was like, by the time I left there, I was just so impressed. So here we go. This is going to look good up close. If you want to watch, this is going to be a very unique way to do this. See that? Look at that, Michael. Dude, you didn't mess me up that bad, Michael. These colors are good. I don't know. Tell me if you think my Michael is trying to sabotage my life here with these colors. I think, it, I think he tried, and it turned out just amazing. OK, this piss yellow might have got me down here, but we don't know. It doesn't matter unless you guys don't like it. If you guys don't like it, then I won't like it. But if you is all love it. epoxy bond to wood? Our epoxy bonds to wood very well. Okay, now, you can't do this with a countertop, guys. You can't, like I said, you can't do this with a regular countertop, unless it's like an island and you get a couple of Jabroskis to help you. But we can do it. We better help Michael. We better help Michael mix here in a second, because I think Michael's stuff's about to set up on him. That is not turning out the worst, guys. I'm really just not wanting to roll it. You could roll this. This is epoxy, so this will turn to a sheet of glass once I let it settle for a while. But I want to just leave that really natural pour effect on here, if I, if I can. We will see. We'll see what we see. Yep, Michael's about to start dumping. Dude, that, oh shoot, I'm actually, I wanna, let me hurry, I'm gonna come watch that. Watch Michael dumping that. These are the colors I picked for Michael, so I hope, I hope I actually did give him a difficult time to make it look pretty, because I think that is what he was doing to me. Dude, that's gonna look good, actually. Michael, I like that green. You can't make more of a mess than I'm making over here. Did beautiful, right? I am over here getting ready for your wood thing, and I need to get back over to you. So, uh, guys, I get all quiet over here when I'm working by myself, so you guys need to answer, ask me questions if you want to. Let me know what you like. Oh, dude, that's going to look really good. Thank you for all the love, guys. Every time you guys hit that like sign or a follow, it's a huge help to a small company like ours, and thank you for all the support. Um, someone asked. Uh, if the tape was not started at the border, would the epoxy run off the floor? Yeah, but we don't usually tape our edges. We're just doing it because we're doing kind of a crazy, dirty pour. So. There's a little epoxy on there, so that's probably huh? it's an old camera. Oh, right. Um, I don't know if that tape will stick. Hey, Michael, you want the rest of this color? I always like I always like to help out. I like to look for holes. I didn't I didn't even see that. Didn't even see it. You didn't think I mixed you brown. He no. saw it. He didn't want me to be giving him brown epoxy. 
I'll show you one simple way, guys, to spread this, if it's difficult at all for him to do that. And it's a way I used to spread all of my projects. But now I, a lot of times, use a roller because it gauges the product better. But I used to actually um, run squeegees. But squeegees, unless you're pretty skilled at not running it too fast or too slow, can really cause issues. So I'll show you what it will do with this acrylic pour. Because we Michael poured this out at like, what do you think, 180 degrees? And this used to be, like I say, like how I'd almost always do all of my countertops. I'd use a magic trowel is what these are called. And I have softer ends than a normal trowel. Try to break up all my surface tension here. I can feel the heat coming off of this epoxy. You guys have no idea how hot that was that we poured. this it's actually going to turn out pretty sick. We just don't have any interaction on there today, huh? Anybody ask a single question? You guys are like, you guys all hung over or waiting to go out on a Friday night already? You guys all at work. I know that you're all at work and you're afraid to hit that voice to text and be like, <laughs> damn, damn, Gina. They be doing pretty epoxy over there. Thanks for all the love, guys. Please let me know if you got notifications, if you can talk, if you guys, if your fingers aren't broken and you can communicate in any way. Blink twice if TikTok sent you the notif notification. Blink once if they didn't. Okay, now you're gonna see something really beautiful. Have you guys seen our um, sync videos going viral today? We have a, what is it up to? Two million views or something almost from yesterday? Just from yesterday afternoon because we blew glitter on a sink, so. Now all I'm doing is warming it up. We dumped a ton of colors together, very, very hot. So we have all these color mixes um, in here and all tons and tons of air. So I wanna just torch this and get all those bubbles out. What kind of epoxy are you using? This is um, countertop epoxy. Um, it, link is in the bio, and this is our actual um, black label product. Uh, um, it's a non-hazardous um, resin, so let me, um, it's a non-hazardous countertop resin. It's a really thick viscosity. I know you see we taped our edges here. We usually don't, you don't need to on a countertop, but I didn't, I wanted to do a dirty pour technique and tip this around um, and not lose all my product just kind of for fun here. I mean, I have done some big islands like this. And like I was saying, I learned this technique. I went over to China and got to work with these artists. We were doing some really cool art for a big um, hotel chain. And um, it was, it was, that was an awesome experience, so. Nope, you can um, purchase right online. The link's in the bio. Anybody can go on there um, and purchase products. I mean, they're actually very well priced. If you want to put some very cheap sweat equity in your home for countertops, floors, walls, this is it. And Michael, I, I don't know, dude. You poured hot as hot as can be, but. And why are we adding heat? Um, the torch is actually a really good way to pop all the little air bubbles and help it self-level and warm it up without disrupting our pattern underneath. 
so I kind of sabotaged Michael. I gave him a bad idea, then I didn't explain it, then I messed it up and did it differently. Then I, he didn't get enough help from any of us mixing, so his product got hot and poured out at like almost 200 degrees, so it didn't flow as much, so we had to trowel it. But what do you guys think of the patterns? I don't know. I tried to do kind of a natural rock effect here. Um, it is on the website. If you want to go buy uh, Kill Your Local um, Pedophile, you can even just call the office if you want to purchase one. And they're my favorite shirts. I usually wear them all the time, but of course they're all in my dirty clothes hamper. If you apply this to your covers, how long it This is a very long lasting, this is what I call a permanent repairable coating permanent in the fact that as long as you maintain it, polish it every like five, six, seven years, you, can, you have a very thick coat. This is not your standard epoxy where you're like painting it on and catalyze, like a catalyzed paint. Like watch over here, you can actually see the, you, if you really watch the torch, a lot of your colors are going to completely change. The whites are heavy so they'll settle. We'll get rid of some of this. You can create a blur with the torch. There's all kinds of fun stuff you can do. Come to a class if you guys want to. We have people from all over the world attend our workshops. Um, we're in Western Colorado, that's Grand Junction. Oh man, that red actually, there wasn't much of it, but that, that, that looks really good, Michael. What do you all think? Now I am going to pour a casting piece for a sweet, sweet lady. I, I hope she finds out that we did this for her and she's happy, because I'll just say we didn't tell her we did this. She had a big art piece here that she carved, and, and she was working so hard, and she was so sweet, and she asked for help with it. And the epoxy here that we're pouring, it's, it's about $150 a pour, so I thought maybe she wouldn't be mad if we just did it all for her and saved her the money and the time. Uh, back in the last piece, someone was asking you about the alcohol, if you put it in the pour or put it on after the pour, or how that works. After. Usually your alcohol would be sprayed on top, and sometimes that's... Um, we use alcohol to cool a piece like this, or over there we'll use it just to pop air bubbles. There's different reasons for using um, alcohol in different p cases. So, um, and a lot of times we get our colors onto our piece too. But I always want to make sure that I'm um, that I'm not applying it just before I torch it. Either has to be a long time before I run the torch on it. I hope I get this leveled out here decent enough for. Someone said I want to know about the light box. The light box. Um, I'm sad to say um, that's an embarrassing question. The light box that it started out so cool. And it just wasn't quite as nice as I thought, and I keep thinking I'm going to get around to it, but I, I am, sadly have not. It's one of those projects sitting in the corner that is probably the ugliest crap in my whole office. Jeanette, what, Jeanette you deserve yeah. Jeanette, I love your box. I just have not finished it yet. I am so sorry I have not finished it, and I will finish it. I promise you. I do think when we finish it and turn the lights on, and it's, it's going to be beautiful. It's just going to take me some sanding and polishing. And I could have done it this week. But what would you know that Levi left both of his really nice festivals on a job in California? So, I mean, purposefully, but I hate sanding now with my other sanders. Once you use a festival, you never want to use anything else. Now, there is approximately nine, about nine gallons of resin on this piece. So, pretty good, almost ten. 10 gallons on here. And, um, now, generally I'm going to let casting resin, because we're pouring it so thick, we don't want that exothermic reaction, the heat, to overheat the piece, especially um, when you're layering pours. If you ever um, pour one really cool pour and then you pour a really hot pour, um, the different temperatures will create warping in your piece, or can create warping. They won't guarantee, but it's good to just always keep casting resin nice and cool. Um, and pour it in layers, and you, and you can pour an inch, inch and a half thick, but there's no need to kind of push that. Um, just keep every layer clear, don't torch it, let the air naturally come out, and then after it's sat here for 30, 40 minutes, um, just spray alcohol on it, and it'll be perfect. Um, one thing, I don't know if you can see this, but this sweet old lady, she did this kind of as her own self-therapy due to some stuff she'd been through in her life, and she taught herself how to carve, and this is all hand carved out of a log. Um, I had it all mixed before, guys. I apologize. I didn't want to. I didn't want to bore you guys to death. So I think our pieces leveled out pretty nicely, didn't they? 
our true dirty pour pieces. Now we can, if we want to, come over here and you'll be just in time for the very addicting and ever so fun. Oh, it's not really flowing off. <laughs> okay, it's not addicting because it just didn't have enough product and it's sitting in there all set up pretty. But sometimes when the product flows off the side, it's really fun to watch. I got you guys all hot and bothered for no damn reason. I do that to people a lot. Yeah, it's like already cured from 200 degrees to... Okay, that looks beautiful. Through what? <laughs> Jeanette says, uh, oh, through my piece. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow, I did not hear everything. I was like, dang, I'm not hearing this stuff right, Jeanette. <laughs> they were trying to read the comments to me, Jeanette. I was like, we, we need to be more proper up on this channel. You know what, if Michael did that, I would deserve it because yeah, I've done some shitty things to Michael's pieces in the past. Michael's one of those guys that everybody wishes they worked with once they meet him. But fuck you guys, I do. You guys can't have him. There we go. Look at that. purple in there? It just turned Dude, I don't even know. Maybe I mixed so many damn colors we got a purple. Okay, dude, I actually like your piece. That is a very nice natural stone, don't you think? Yeah. Sand that down and get some crazy rock through here. Yeah. I mean, Jesus added a little yellow in this rock over here. Blue Man says we make some cool stuff. Blue Man, thank you. We have some awesome customers, and thank you guys so much for the love. A small company like ours, when you guys hit that love button or you share us or you comment, you follow, I mean, it's, it's a huge deal to us. Um, all of our competitors are massive. Multi, our biggest competitor that almost all, owns almost all of our small competitors outright is about a $2 billion company. And then there's us. It's a very small company. And it's amazing to me that I believe we've very clearly showed over the last few years we became the in industry's leading quality, like the absolute best quality in resins in the world. So, which is fun because it's a tiny, awesome team. And look at, oh, dude, look at this. Look at this ceiling. Selling through there, dude. That is that oh, is yeah. legit. Oh, where's that torch, dude? That? I'm gonna keep burning shit. This is amazing. That actually turned out really good. This is really awesome. I don't know how how much you guys can see on a macro level the just the amazing uh, marbling and all the selling we got out of this. I love when you get the separation here where you see the actual really nice marbling. And up close, the whole piece is like that. No, you could do this on a countertop, though. You'd want somebody really amazing like me if you are going to do this. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. I suck. You'd just want somebody like me that's willing to make huge mistakes and try to forget about them and get past it. Be willing to pour the countertop twice if that's what it Half the cool things I've done were accidents or things I had to do three or four times to get it just right. Okay, guys, I don't want to mess this up because it is just beautiful. And I think I'm going to do a quick thing that I told you guys I never do. Don't ever torch your casting resin because we want to keep it cool. So I'm not torching this right now at all. It will pop the air bubbles super fast. And if I don't have any extended time whatsoever on here, then it'll stay very, very clear and I shouldn't have issues. But like I say, I do think um, for the majority of people, we should try to always stay away from ever tor torching our casting resin. And if you guys can see, I don't know if you all see in the reflection here, but um, right here, you can see I haven't quite poured deep enough to get through the wood right here. And this whole piece was a tiny bit warped. But what I'm noticing here is that um, this end here is more than full enough to be perfectly flat. So I kind of think what I should probably do so I don't have to sand this piece or anything 
is lift up this end. And just shim this up just literally a quarter of an inch, or sixth, an eighth of an inch, something like that, to get a little more of this product to flow down towards the other end. So, um, so this works out properly. It may actually allow me to sand or fill quite a bit less and just keep the piece nice and level. And what would you guys use this for? We, I've heard headboards, um, a bar top. Those are probably what I would consider the two best pieces. We will peel this foil tape off and then polish all the way around the edges and get everything very smooth so you see the live edge. So. Um, another gal says she torched probably about the same amount and she planned it. How would you prevent that? Um, just buy a better epoxy. Um, if you're torching it and it's burning it, either your epoxy is too thin or a lot of epoxies out there, unfortunately, it's kind of sad these companies lie about their products and they say, oh, it's zero VOC. But they put these harmful chemicals, trifunctional amines, isobenzoyl alcohol, and nonphenol. And I always talk about these as being an unhealthy chemical that causes, causes cancer. But another thing is, is it causes discoloration, yellowing, browning. Um, they do burn a little faster. And sometimes I'll say torching. People think they're torching the same, but there's a bit of a technique to torching. Um, a lot of times people will burn it on the end, or they'll move it pretty fast, but they really just keep moving it over the same place. So. Maybe you have to torch less too, but um, be sure to watch some of our videos and call our office if you're ever having any issues and we can definitely walk you through it. But as you can see, our products, I mean, I can direct very directly torch um, because it doesn't have those harmful chemicals that evaporate out and burn very, very easily under heat. So. Um, is there a difference between casting resin and countertop resin? Very different, yeah. Casting resin is very different than a countertop in the fact that the Exothermic reaction, that means the rate that it cures at um, on a casting resin is much slower than that on a countertop. A countertop, you want a really hard, what they call shore D hardness, and shore D is like how, how um, resistant to, a, to like a cut or a fingernail poke or something like that, and, and that meter goes all the way from like zero to probably 100 on the average scale, which 100 would be like insane. Um, we have the hardest shore D ratings you'll ever find on our countertop resin. But the casting resin, we actually like to slow that down a little bit, and you still end up with a shore D hard hardness rating that's high, but it takes like probably two months to get there as opposed to three or four days. Um, but then you can pour really thick without cooking that piece and keep really good color. As you see, some of this is a, you can't really tell on the screen because you can't see three-dimensionally, but like right through here, you're probably almost four inches thick right through here, and it's just glass clear. So, and if you wanted to even, uh, the next level a tiny bit clearer. We could even vacuum pop this as well. So thank you guys for all the amazing questions. Um, as for where they're going to apply it, they said like bar stop, um, headboards, wall piece. And someone asked how we do a wall. How we do a wall? We actually have wall epoxy, and it's a non-sag um, vertical formula. And we do all kinds of here. I'll show you. Like a, this is a wood grain piece. I was going to do this one of these on the live for you right now. I think we kind of ran out of time. But this right here is kind of. Um, we taped off lines, and this is just one way, and I used a regular wood graining tool like you'd buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. And as you see it, the wall epoxy really keeps its shape, whatever you trowel into it. Um, then I sprayed a bunch of colors, and then I peeled these lines. These were just taped down so I could get that nice white base color back. So thank you guys for all the awesome questions. And please hit the follow button. Check out our, we have a video going viral out there right now, so go catch that virus. It's on, it's on our main channel, so go hit the follow and tell us what you think of our sink, a purple sink. It's definitely 50-50 controversy, I've been told, so either everybody thinks I'm the dumbest guy in the world for spraying glitter, and uh, I said purple. I've sprayed so much purple glitter, I thought the sink was purple. It's blue, so. Well, it is purple. It, oh, it is purple. We did it again, and it's blue now, so, so now the blue man crew, so. Anyways, well, thank you guys so much for joining us on the live today um, and being willing to watch us make mistakes and learn together. And thank you, Michael, for being a gangster. And hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for, Thanks, you guys got to come check out a class. He runs one of the best. I teach a little bit, but he actually runs one of the best epoxy classes you'll ever find in the world. And it is the best. So God bless you guys. Kill a pedophile. And I may see you today, but probably Monday. Monday? You'll see him on Monday. I'm gone. Thanks. Bye, guys.